Hi guys, it is day 20 something of our community quarantine and I have officially lost track of the days of the week. So lately I have been thinking about the bag that I would use in case we come across a zombie apocalypse or in case the situation actually escalates into something like a zombie apocalypse. Now I know you're probably thinking that I have gone insane but you know a few months ago nobody ever thought that the situation would become like the way it is today so I guess it is always good to be very prepared for anything and yeah this is just something that I'm starting to think of because you know when you are in self-isolation for so long your mind just really starts thinking of all of these hypothetical and really crazy situations. So the bag that I would actually choose is my Louis Vuitton Speedy Bando 25. Now disclaimer here this is actually not my favorite handbag and this is a handbag that I hardly ever use but at the same time I do think that it is the perfect handbag in a situation like a zombie apocalypse or any emergency situation and in today's video I'll be giving you five reasons why I think that this is the perfect handbag for any of those situations. So let's jump right in with my reason number one and that is because this handbag is so durable and very very practical. I love the fact that this one is made in the Louis Vuitton canvas material and it is scratch resistant, it is also waterproof. I have mine in the Damier Ebene print so I don't have to worry about water stains on like the Vaqueta leather because this one of course is darker than for instance something that came in the monogram pattern and this lighter sort of leather. So the brown checkered canvas is complemented by the dark handles and the brass hardware. So there are some leather portions which include the handles and the strap as well and then also the side of the handbag where the D-rings are on both on opposite sides. So those are all leather pieces on this handbag. Other things that make this handbag very very practical is the fact that it has two zipper pulls and now they have changed it from the classic leather tab to something that is a little easier to use which is in metal. And when you open up the handbag, it has a really beautiful red lining, something that I really, really like also about this handbag because I find that because of the red lining, it's just easier to locate things inside your handbag. And it's really, really easy to see what is on the inside of the handbag. It also has a convenient zippered back pocket on the inside, which is just nice to keep small little items like jewelry that you're not wearing or for instance hair ties and then to the other side it has a d-ring which is where i clip on my mini pochette just so that it's easy to find or sometimes i will clip, clip on my keys but usually i'll just put on my mini pochette because that is a little bit larger and easy to find on the inside of the handbag the other thing that I love about this handbag and it makes it very very practical is that it has two large D-rings on opposite sides of the handbag where you can clip on either your own strap or the strap that it comes with. And this brings me to point number two which is the convenience of this Louis Vuitton leather strap. So the Speedy B strap is actually three parts and you can take it apart and use each part separately so that's the nice thing about this you can really customize it to the size that you want it to be so for instance if you did not want to use the middle part you can just take off the middle and then attach the first part and the second part and wear it as a shoulder bag instead of wearing it as a crossbody and that makes it as a shorter strap, especially if you are somebody who likes to wear this in the crook of your arm. It just makes it very, very convenient. And then you can also put on the middle part, of course, and wear it as a crossbody or wear it as a shoulder bag. And that also looks really, really good. So I love the fact that this is just so versatile in terms of the length that you can make it. 
and then because it is also in three pieces the middle part is actually all leather so there's no metal part that hits your shoulders and that makes it very very comfortable to wear moving on to point number three and i don't think any discussion would be quite complete without discussing the price of this handbag so I got this last year in Singapore and it's already gone through a few price increases. So I got it for about 2,100 Singaporean dollar. And for that price, I don't think there are a lot of other Louis Vuitton handbags that you can get at the same price. I think the only other ones you could get like the Alma BB for a little bit cheaper. You can also get the Neverfull for uh, slightly cheaper. I think the No, the Noe bag as well, you can also get for um, a little bit cheaper or, this, or around the same price as this bag. But those options are like, they're, they're just totally different as compared to having something that is a very classic looking speedy and something that is a crossbody and very, very practical as well in terms of what can fit on the inside. Of course, the Neverfull is the only one that is like bigger than the Speedy at that price point. Um, but for the Neverfull, I don't really like it because it doesn't have the zipper on the top part. And I just feel like I don't want all the contents of my bag exposed, especially uh, in situations where you have to deal with like going into crowded places or something. I, I just don't like the feeling of having my bag um, exposed like that so this one is very nice because of the zipper and the price point is pretty good for a louis vuitton handbag still talking about the price the other thing about this handbag is on the resale market i think that this does extremely well so it is a very classic speedy silhouette and with the addition of the bandolier or the strap, it makes it very, very practical. And if I wanted to resell this, so for instance, if I was in a pinch and I needed really to get cash very quickly, um, I could easily dispose of this handbag in the secondary market. And that's because there's just such a big demand for it. I mean, as compared to Chanel and Hermes, of course, the price point of this is a lot more affordable and I think that's also the reason why there's such a big demand for it and of course because the silhouette is the classic speedy it's not going to go out of style I know that in the future if I do decide to purchase it again I can just go to the Louis Vuitton store and be able to get myself this exact same handbag so I guess what I'm trying to say is that I wouldn't be too heartbroken if I had to part with this uh, in case that I really, really did need emergency funds because I know that in the future I would be able to get the exact same handbag. And I think the thinking is a lot like how they say in World War II, uh, soldiers were issued Rolexes, and that's because Rolexes could easily be converted into cash. And I guess if um, you are thinking in terms of practicality, like something like that, um, the Louis Vuitton Speedy would definitely be the most practical handbag in my collection. So I think that was also my point number four and I think I kind of combined my point three and four together since it's all to do with prices. But the last point that I wanted to talk about is actually the size of the speedies. So I do not have a speedy bandolier 30 to show you but I do have the classic speedy in the size 30 and when I am talking about the classic I think I do actually prefer the size 30 but when it is the bandolier version, I prefer the size 25. And the reason why I prefer the 25 is because it doesn't sag as quickly. So if you are thinking of getting this bag or a similar shaped handbag, I do suggest getting it with a base or getting an organizer on the inside just so that it doesn't collapse. Like you can see mine, it, it does, it's right now it is stuffed with pillows, but uh, it does tend to sort of collapse right in the center, especially if you don't have anything on the inside. So the Speedy Bandolier 30, like if I were to say this size, 
um, and if you wear it as a strap, the problem with the strap is because it goes like that, it tends to squish the bag right here. And then since the contents will all puddle in the middle, this just tends to sag a lot. And it doesn't look very aesthetically pleasing, I guess. So that's why when I tried the Bandelier 30, I thought that the size was just a little too big for my frame. So that's why I ended up with the 25. But in terms of like, if you uh, wanted to go for the more classic speedy, I actually think that the 30 looks better than the 25 in terms of the proportion and in terms of the way it looks when you hold it in the crook of your arm. So those are my five reasons why I would choose the Speedy Bandelier 25 out of all my other bags in case of an emergency situation. But I also did want to discuss some cons as well to the handbag. And the first thing that I wanted to talk about is the hardware. So if you do live in like a humid country like mine, the hardware does tend to sort of uh, oxidize a little bit so you will see a little bit of the darkening and then you will see a little bit of rusting on the hardware and they Louis Vuitton actually changed their hardware from uh, brass which is the older Louis Vuittons they're all made in brass metal to something that just says metal so I'm not so sure what this is made out of but I feel like it is a little less durable than their older Louis Vuitton handbags. So the other thing about this handbag is that the opening is quite small. If you wanted something with a bigger opening, I would say to go for like the Sienna PM or the MM size. But this one has um, a little bit of a small opening. So it is sometimes difficult to get your things in and out of the handbag, which is why I tend to use uh, smaller SLGs when I use this handbag. But the opening's not too hard and I find that the material is quite pliable as well. So the more that you use the handbag, of course, the easier it is to get in and out your stuff in this handbag. And then the last con that I would say about this handbag is it doesn't really keep its shape very well. So if you are storing the handbag, you really have to store it either this way. Uh, you can fold it, but if you fold it, you get creases like this, like the ones that I have on my handbag. And you will have to use it for a few days or a few weeks before these creases fall out. And I would say also that you really need to have a base on the bottom of your handbag just to keep the shape of it. But in terms of its size, like to the side, I really enjoy it because I think it is still very, very nice. Uh, it fits very nicely as a crossbody. It's just that I wish that it did have a little bit more structure, but that could just be a personal opinion because I am somebody who likes a little bit of structure to my handbags. So guys, this is the bag of choice for me. Let me know in the comments down below if we were facing a zombie apocalypse, what bag would you guys choose and the reasons why. It's just a sort of fun topic, I guess, to discuss. And I know it is very hypothetical and really out of this world. But anyways, it's just something, I guess, to help take our minds off current events. So I hope everybody is doing well. If you enjoyed this week's video, please do give it a thumbs up. Please consider subscribing as well to my channel by pressing the subscribe button. I try to do weekly videos all about luxury and lifestyle. Please take care and I will see all of you in the next video. Bye-bye.